All right, welcome to the show, everybody. This week, I've got Dennis Poyer on. Dennis is with Seek Outside. And as you might be able to see behind him, today we're going to be talking about shelters and some stove setups. So we're pretty excited about this. Dennis put in a lot of work today. We started talking about, I don't know, what, four or five hours ago, Dennis? Yeah, four, yeah it's something about everybody something, that, <laughs> something like that. And I was like, hey, man, I've got an idea. Why don't we try to do a video? And if you want to set up a shelter, and four or five hours later, he's like, hey, man, look what I've got. And he has this whole big mess behind him. So I'm excited about it. And uh, we're going to I think we're going to get some some really good info here today. So anyway, yeah, I, mean, I think it's, it, for, for full disclosure, it didn't take me four hours to set up all these tents. It took me four hours to get everything else figured out and how I was going to do this. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, audio is always a trick for sure. So anyway, get comfortable and. Um, Dennis, you can go ahead and get comfortable and get, kind of take cool. your time heading in there. We'll check these out along the way. What are we looking yeah. at on the way in, Dennis? What's that right there? Yeah, I got a Silex set up, kind of our solo shelter here. Um, on the kind of kitty corner from that, I have a Cimarron set up with a medium U-turn stove in there. And then on this side of the world, I have a Red Cliff set up. Um, so Cimarron is going to be kind of your two person with a stove configuration. And then on this side, I have the red cliff, which is going to give us, uh, closer to four people with a stove or three people with a stove. I also have a nest pitch on this side, which we will get to at some point. Um, and just to kind of show that space, I have the ability to get in, in my chair and hang out here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a so those teepees are they're almost a little bit deceiving on how much space is actually inside of those things. What's the stand up yeah. height right there at the pole where you're sitting? What what's the stand up height on that red cliff? Yeah, so um so the red cliff is gonna be six ten. Um, built built around six ten. So um, yeah, I mean I can easily stand up at the pole. Uh, as you get closer right to the edges, you, you know, you lose kind of that headroom, but you do get about 6'10 at the pole. So. Yeah, but still, it gives you a sweet spot to change your clothes and pants and hang stuff up and do whatever. But anyway, so we'll, get into the, we'll get into the shelters here in a little bit. I wanted to hear, so we're, first thing we're going to do is hear a little bit about your background, of course, like we do on any podcast. Hear a little bit about Dennis Poyer, and then we'll hear about some Seek Outside, and then we'll start talking about those shelters and the different types that you guys offer and configurations, which is I'm, I'm excited to talk about. So anyway, let's hear about your background. How'd you get involved yeah. with Seek? How'd you get involved with the outdoors? Yeah. So, um, so I grew up in Northern Wisconsin, a little town, little town of Bloomer, Wisconsin. Um, you know, I, I just grew up hunting and fishing and just kind of what, what we did growing up. Uh, my dad, I, I, I remember distinctly being young enough and small enough to fit in his wicker basket as we checked traps and did it like he had a trap mm -hmm. line set up. Um, I remember cruising around in an old Chevy Chevette that he had for checking traps and, and running his trap line and nice. uh, doing kind of dry sets for Fox and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I grew up kind of in, in that world and then, um, you know, just been hunting and fishing forever. Uh, my hearing would would agree with me that I probably shot too many shotguns when I was little uh, with, with no hearing protection on, you mm -hmm. know, uh, all those things. Uh, so, yeah, we would go um, duck hunting in North Dakota every year. Um, I think I, I shot my first, uh, my first deer with a bow when I was 12. Uh, not, not any, any prowess of mine. I think I, when I shot, I, I missed her so bad as a doe. I shot kind of over her, like, kind of butt end, right, and above her back. And my bow was so slow that when I, when I shot, she, she jumped the string and twisted and turned. And I hit her right in the neck. And she went, like, 10 yards and fell over. So it wasn't, wasn't, I wasn't trying to do that, but that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so been been doing that, and then from from there have just kind of been traveling around. Uh, we lived in Bellingham, Washington, for a couple of years, uh, and then made our way to Grand Junction, where we're currently at now. 
Um, it's like 80 some degrees today, super nice out, high desert. Um, and then we've been here for about five years. Um, and I met uh, I met Kevin and Angie, who are the, the founders and owners of Seek Outside, mm-hmm. probably about five years ago um, while I was working uh, for REI. I worked for REI uh, as an outdoor programs coordinator for them for about five years. Um, and so I met Kevin and Angie about five years ago, um, did a overnight trip with uh, one of their staff members uh, up on the Colorado, uh, the Grand Mesa here. Um, in town, just outside of town, got my first kind of experience with a hot tent. Uh, and then through talking with them, just kind of worked out that uh, I could start working for them, I guess. You know, so. Wow. Nice. I've been, been working with Kevin and Angie since about uh, October, I guess, of this year. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so can, what can you tell us about Seek, the background on Seek and some of their history? Yeah, so Seek Outside's been been around for 10 years. This is actually um, their 10th year. Um, they started in, um, I would say, probably, uh, you know, like like all of these kind of uh, boutique companies or, or whatnot in a garage, right, or actually their basement. Uh, started in their basement in Uray, Colorado, and from there kind of moved up to uh, manufacturing facility here in Grand Junction. Um, if you don't know, you raised probably, you know, a couple thousand people, maybe in a small mountain town. Uh, so not not a big manufacturing hub or not enough uh, workers or whatnot. So Grand Junction wasn't too far away, uh, about a couple hours, I think. Um, and so they moved up here and started a manufacturing facility, really small team. Um, one of the other cool things about Grand Junction is it it was the uh, first production facility for Marmot. So if you know like Marmot clothing or Sleep mm-hmm. Bag, they're sure. And they're sure. Not, um, so a lot of that kind of infrastructure was still around, um, and they were able to to use that either either people who had worked for Marmot had sewn for them, um, or even machines and stuff they were able to use uh, from that era to get kind of get this business started. Yeah. And then from there, yeah, I kind of kind of took off the the titanium, the lightweight pa- packable stoves in the teepees are kind of what what made Seek outside. Yeah, that's that's always been the bread and butter. If I have, it's, as long as I've known Seek outside, it's been stoves and shelters. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, very good. Well, okay, so we're talking about products and bread and butters and all of that kind of stuff. So, what all products does Seek? offer what do you guys have what do you guys sell out yeah you know, to include the shelters but let's talk about the product yeah totally so we we make um we make shelters right shelters for anywhere from one to 24 people so we make a 24 person teepee which is like i've never seen one uh we don't make them all the time I, well I, I shouldn't say that. i've seen them i haven't seen them set up um, they're massive. You can think like a YMCA camp or something might get a 24 person teepee. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, not a lot of recreational users getting, um, a 24 person teepee, but so we do make a 24, a 16, a 12, eight, six, four. And then the silver tips kind of like a two or a, or a solo teepee shelter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in those teepees are going to have round bases on them. You know, uh, some there's always a little bit of confusion between like our, our Cimarron and Redcliffe, which I'll, I have set up and I'll be able to show today. Um, but our, our Cimarron and Redcliffe have a rectangular uh, like base to them. So they're more like a pyramid shape. Mm-hmm. Um, our TVs have a round base. Uh, and, and because of that kind of round versus rec- rectangle, um, there's advantages with the rectangle and usable space. Uh, the round shelters. Uh, you know, just they're more iconic looking, right? You, like they pitch like a teepee and then they look like sure. a teepee. Yeah. Sure. Um, and then from from kind of the, the shelter side, we also make backpacks, uh, lightweight backpacks as well, um, using x pack waterproof fabrics, uh, kind of an external frame, breakaway style for hunting and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, Super comfortable packs, I would say, coming from kind of a rec world as well, that REI 
side. Um, we can get, you know, a fairly large hunting pack uh, under four pounds for most people. So, Yeah, so Jordan came up and, and met up with you guys up there in Grand Junction not too long ago, and he tried one on, and he was pretty impressed with that, with the pack. Um, yeah. And it, uh, so, go ahead, go ahead. I just, uh, you know, I have a, a fair amount of experience with, like, Arc'teryx packs mm -hmm. um, and coming from, like, that rec world into the hunting kind of pack, uh, you know, line. Uh, the seating outside is definitely one of the closer in just comfort that you get that compares to me to, like, an Arc'teryx pack. If anybody's ever tried one on um, or been in an REI and been able to try one on. So. Yeah, there's not a lot of crossover between that. It, it's almost like there's a defined line between our REI is the wrong term, but say through hiker type of, of uh, products and then hunting type of products. And it's almost like nobody wants to try to do a hybrid type of deal or, or try to cross that line when yeah. there's so many benefits to, to both that could be merged somewhere. So, yeah, I mean, we, we definitely have uh, backpacks that people use on, on, um, you know, the CDT or the AT um, that are closer to three pounds, just over three pounds uh, for, an, for an external frame pack. So that they can carry a hundred, mm -hmm. but they pay three. Um, so we, we definitely have that ability, you know. Um, and then I would say another thing we do as far as that, like, lightweight bringing kind of, you know, th these shelters made out of still nylon are super light. Uh, but what we what we have been doing in the last year is integrating this uh, Dyneema fabric mm -hmm. uh, into our tent. So we're able to save um, significant weight off of like a red cliff that I'm sitting in now. We, we make a red cliff out of DCF that saves uh, almost two pounds, I think, in just fabric weight. Oh, so, man. And does it uh, still have the same waterproof and water resistant capabilities? Yeah, properties. Yeah. I guess properties is a better word, right? Yeah. 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 So same thing, um, you know, meets mill spec or, or, or whatnot. Again, I'm not real good with the with all the numbers, um, but it definitely meets uh, the same waterproofness of, of, say, our other fabrics. Um, the other cool thing about Dyneema is that it doesn't stretch. So hmm. like if, if, you, if you've experienced, I know you have a Cimarron. Um, when they get wet or maybe, you know, maybe even like a snow, like they, that sill, an advantage to sill right is that it, it can stretch a little bit. You uh -huh. can get some play in it. Um, the Dyneema is like, boom. It's like a, huh. uh, yeah, it's like a two by so four. So when you're almost. stretching out the corners on the, let's say the, the red clip or, or whatever tent it is, my Cimarron, there, it doesn't even have that, that much play in it to stretch them out. Really? No. Wow. Yeah. That's you when you pull it tight, it's tight. You know, it wow. doesn't it doesn't move at all. Yeah, it's very uh, very rigid fabric. Cool. I haven't really looked at it much. I know they're listed on the website. So anybody that's super curious about those and looking for those ultra lightweight um, shelters, it's listed right underneath their TP tents under Dyneema composite fabric tents. So you can check them out. It's got all their weights and everything is listed on there. Certainly worth checking out if you're one of those ounce counters that's trying to save a pound or two. Yeah, totally. And, and I guess that kind of gets to that bridging that through hiker versus, you know, hunting backpacker world. Mm -hmm. um, is we're able to get, you know, even even the Cimarron DCF uh, with a medium U-turn stove I was running this fall. It was a hot tank combo that was under five pounds. And can you still yeah. run a um, nest inside of it if you wanted to? <laughs> Yeah, totally. Yeah. Do you have an ultralight nest to go with it, or is it the same nest that you would use? Okay. I didn't yeah, know same, if that was. Same, yeah, same nest. Um, we we've thought about it. They eventually, you, you know, like our Dyneema tents. Uh, Dyneema is really expensive. It's about twice as expensive, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So your nest would be twice. So you're looking at almost, you know, I don't know, a couple couple grand almost. yeah and it'd be up there a, a red pretty... cliff or like a, a thousand plus or fifteen hundred dollars you yeah. know uh, usually guys yeah. that are trying to count ounces like that and go for that ultra light they, they really don't care about sleeping in the dirt and they don't care about a mouse or climbing in their tent or anything like that so yeah totally they're, they're, saving that ounces is worth is worth cuddling with the mice right at that point yeah exactly 
I can go farther. I can go longer. I can go deeper in the more, the woods. So yeah. right on. Uh, well, cool. All right. So um, we've talked about that. You have shelters. Did you talk about the stoves? You guys have stoves also? Yep, and then we and then we make um, titanium wood stoves uh, in in rollable pipe, and, and we we'll get at and kind of look look at those as well. But um, anywhere from a very small uh, our cub size, which would be something maybe for the silex here, like a solo style um, stove, up to so cub, medium, large, extra large, uh, SXL. And then uh, the big mama, which would be like eight man teepee type deal. Like it's a big stove. Um, if, if you don't have to carry it or, or if you have horses or something, that's where the big mama is really nice. Yeah. Uh, but, okay. but all these things pack, they pack flat um, and they're made out of titanium. So they're super light. And then they're also able to handle that temperature. So a lot of stainless steel stoves, if you burn them, use them a lot or use them long enough, they'll burn the bottoms out. This, you know the stainless will just break down um the the titanium we've had people using these stoves for again close to like seven eight nine years at this point um every fall every season um and they look they look as if they were you know something that you've used a couple times so. hmm. cool very cool okay good so we'll look at those here in a minute uh, let's talk about shelters all right we'll talk about the different sizes of that you have. So, oh, well, we've already kind of touched on the red clip there. Um, we'll check out the simmer on in a minute. Let's actually check. Let's actually talk about the. Yeah, let me. Let me the move nest. This we, can, uh, we can get an idea of kind of how how this red cliff looks on the inside. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna set the camera up over here and then just show you one half of the tent. Um, and then you can kind of get an idea what that looks like. Um, so. So center pole, um, we have carbon poles for all of our shelters. You can you can either upgrade or like the Red Cliff just comes with a carbon pole um, is standard. And then this would be what we call our nest. Um, so this is our Red Cliff half nest. Um, it's just, we say nest is essentially a giant screen room um, and easily fit. Um, and I don't know if you can kind of see me there, but uh, yep. you can easily fit two people in here. Uh, you know, I'm like way over on this side. So two people um, in the red cliff, you can pitch two of these. So you could put a half nest on one side and then a half nest on the other side and stick four guys inside of a nest if you wanted to. Um, or you can run a nest on one side and a, and a stove on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and then without the nest, you know, you, you lose a little bit of space with the nest, um, which is why we would call the Red Cliff like more of a six person. Um, if you if you didn't have the nest on the inside, uh, you could easily fit six in here without a stove. Okay. Um, and then when you add a stove in, right, a stove takes up, takes up a significant amount of room, mainly because it's, burning hot right it's like they're really really hot um, and at that point we would recommend you know three comfortably in here in the red cliff uh in gear and stuff that would uh three with a stove um some guys will run four we have some people on uh kodiak island that'll run four all the time in alaska um they they just that's how they work right they're, they're comfortable mm -hmm. being next to each other um a lot of other guys are like some some people would say that this is like a two person tent, right? They're like, no way, I want like, all this room. I want to be able to, you know, put my stuff in here. But but yeah, so with this half nest, um, the you know, uh, two, two people in there comfortably. Yeah, yeah, that's funny that you say that because I I I like to think my Cimarron is a one person tent. <laughs> it's a one person. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a it's a very luxur luxurious one person tent, right? Uh, yeah, it's you, it's you great. Get all that room. Um, and so I, I'm, let me zip this up real quick too. And I just want to show another advantage to, to these types of setups with the floorless, uh, setup here, just being that on, on this side, you know, half the tent here or so I have this screened in room that's clean. That's where my sleeping bag goes. 
it's all tied up in there. Nothing can in there. No, no snakes. Kind of like your rattlesnake you guys posted today. Um, <laughs> nothing, nothing's yeah. getting in there. Uh, Man, I don't want to wake up next side, to one of those. On this side, I have all this room here that I can, you know, I can do anything with this. I could get dressed over here. I can leave my boots over here. I can, I can stash wood in here to dry, and I don't have to worry about ripping up a floor. Um, and again, it's a, it's a fairly significant space, you know, back in here. Um, again, I'm, I'm about six, six foot, six one or so. Um, and I can lay in here just fine. You can also guide these out a little bit and get a little bit more headroom. Um, I was, <laughs> I was running out of stakes setting all these up today. <laughs> I didn't have, a, didn't have enough stakes to set all these shelters up. Um, Your wife says, where are you going with all the forks? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my daughter's inside. Like, she can't wait to come outside and play in all these things. That's um, fine. Good. But yeah, so so that's the red cliff. Let's, let's head over to the... Um, what, so another while thing, too. While, that, while you're trekking yeah. over to the next tent... Um, <laughs> Well, you'll, you'll obviously you'll get there. I was going to just look at the weight of the red cliff. Do you know it off the top of your head? I don't often. I don't. Um, okay. Too, we can talk about all that stuff toward the end. Yeah. Okay. That was, yeah. Um, too many numbers to keep straight. And yeah, usually no I say something, it's always wrong, right? I'm always <laughs> remembering something wrong or it's the, the other version or, or whatnot. Um, so let's, just check out the um, the Cimarron here. So again, very similar setup as the Red Cliff. Uh, the Cimarron came first, like in the design process, right? Cimarron we had for a while, and then we made the Red Cliff, just a bigger, essential, uh, essentially bigger version of the Cimarron. Um, so Cimarron's going to be perfect for two people with this stove. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you can see that or I can move this down a little bit. There you go. Yeah. This is our medium U-turn stove on the inside here. Um, it's not not the not the biggest stove we make, um, but it works well for this size of a shelter um, in here. The other thing that you can see possibly, let me kind of move this up to you, is that I have this pitch right now uh, with two trekking poles. So I'm using our trekking pole hitch, which essentially puts two trekking poles together and, and you can tighten them down. Uh, and this is gonna give you that kind of... Uh... Hey, I think we, we might have lost connection. All right. There you go. No, you're good. Somebody's trying to, somebody's trying to call me. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna, I have the audio for it, I just... So go back to the trekking pole hitch and talk about that and start over with that. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you guys can, can see this in here necessarily, but uh, I have this pitch, uh, the Cimarron here pitched with two trekking poles. So one of the advantages to the peak height um, in the Cimarron is about five foot nine or so. Um, and one advantage there is we can use two trekking poles to pitch it. So you don't even have to bring um, a center pole. You can utilize your trekking poles. It's just a, it's a hitch that puts the two poles together, wraps them, and then you can kind of keep them tight. So when they push down, they kind of hold each other. Um, this is a, this is a really cool piece for saving weight, you know, cutting down that weight um, mm -hmm. going into the backcountry. So utilizing your trekking poles that way. Um, you know, some people will say, well, I need to use my trekking poles during the day that's why i kind of why i bring them and whatnot uh which is which is why we make a center pole right we, mm -hmm. we do make a carbon pole that'll go on the inside for you if you, if you do want to use your trekking poles um, if you had two guys in here you could each share a trekking pole you know give donate one to the to the center pole or yep. whatnot or you can just chop down a tree whenever you find one that's yeah totally and that that is definitely something that um that we recommend in the later seasons as well. So if it uh, if it if it's super snowy or cold or whatnot, um, yeah, those, those cutting a lodge pole if you can get one, a nice straight one, um, and, you, and you're good at measuring kind of that, you know, wherever that five foot eight or five foot nine height is. Um, yeah, that's a really good 
good idea. Um, saves a lot of weight, and then they're really, really strong as mm-hmm. well. They're very strong. So. Yeah. Anytime you end up getting a snow load, like heavy snow loads, those those cut lodge poles work really, really well as a center pole. Uh, then then they usually have little uh, little branches off of them, right? That you can break <laughs> off and use use as a dry drying rack too on the inside. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it worked out really well. So I got lucky somehow many years ago, we'll call it foresight. <clears throat> I was stationed in Hawaii and I chopped off this bam, this big piece of bamboo. And I just always used it as kind of a hiking stick, you know, when I would go hiking with, with my wife or just hiking or whatever. And that thing is five feet, nine inches, wherever I cut it when I was in Hawaii years ago. So Perfect. anytime I throw my Cimarron in the truck for taking it if it's a base camp or something obviously i can't throw it in the backpack and take it with me but that's always my yeah. center pole when i put it up is this big great big piece of bamboo works perfect nice. yeah. yeah and it's strong right it's oh really yeah it's strong. super strong yeah it's not gonna break anytime so what's so there's something special there with that particular tent what do you have going on there yeah so um this will this will go in all of our tvs i just uh i just wanted to highlight some of these pieces so this is our liner what we what we would call our liner. Um, this is pitched again inside the Cimarron. Um, it essentially creates a double wall. Uh, so it does, it does a couple things. Um, it retains a little bit more heat by a lot, by having a double wall. Uh, the other thing it does is it, it helps with the condensation. So um, if, you know, if anybody's been outside and they've lit a fire in something and then let the fire go out, right. If it's cold, the temperature's changing a lot, right. It, Inside the TV, it could be 70 degrees. Outside, it could be 30 degrees. When that fire goes out or if you leave for the day, right, um, it's created a bunch of moisture on the inside, in the ground, maybe just that temperature change from the outside to the inside. Condensation can collect on this silicone, on, on the sil nylon on the inside. Having a double wall just kind of prevents that from ever getting to you when you're sleeping on the inside. Um, so... I have it set up right now. I have the stove. I have the stove on one side of the tent. Um, so I would do like stove, wood in here, backpacks, gear, shoes, whatnot. And then on the other side of the tent over here where the liner is, this is where I would sleep. Um, and Can so you also put the nest liner. in there? Yeah, you, you could put the nest in here if you wanted. If you If you had the nest, then there's really no need for the liner. The, the okay. nest kind of works as a liner, um, keeps that moisture anyways from coming, you know, coming through onto you mm-hmm. uh, so you don't touch it all the time. Um, so, yeah, you could do that. And then this is just a half liner. We You can put two halves. We'll do the whole thing. So if you wanted to, you could do the whole thing. Um, and then the, the center of the liner up here, uh, just you can unhook it and it'll open up where the stove jack is and create some room for the stove jack. Okay. Uh, so you can totally run two liners and a stove um, if it's going to be really cold outside. Gotcha. So, okay, cool. Um, yeah, any, any other questions about the Cimarron? I mean, I know you run one um, and have used one. Yeah, so I'm going to look into one of those liners. I used one last year in – well, I've used it a, several times. But in Colorado, I had some condensation problems with it. But it was 20 – it was like mid to low twenties. And I think just body heat alone created enough of that heat inside that Mm -hmm. by the time we woke up in the morning, it was a lot of frost on the inside of the tent. It wasn't a huge deal because we weren't really touching it or anything. You know, it was just Mm -hmm. on the edges of the tent, but it's pretty chilly. So I think that liner might've, might've helped a lot. And just to run it on half would be perfect. Yeah, totally. The other thing is, is that because we're pitching, um, you know, because these are getting pitched so close to the ground or right on the ground, right? Like there's no, there's no space in between there. And then we do have, um, let me try to show it down, down here maybe. Um, and then we do have an extra layer of fabric as a sod skirt that comes mm-hmm. out, you know, to right. make sure that it pitches nice and tight. We're doing that to keep that heat in, mm-hmm. right? When you're burning a stove. If we didn't have that, the wind would come through and it wouldn't stay warm. Um, but that also means that it traps, traps all that moisture. It doesn't, mm-hmm. doesn't allow it to breathe, right? Um, so what you can do is you could pitch it 
up off the ground on one side, say. Um, the other thing we do is we do have a peak vent that helps with that. Um, and then we have two sliders on the doors. So the top of the door, if you close this, then I have another slider up top. So I could open up the top of the tent and mm -hmm. allow even more moisture to kind of come out of there. Um, you know, obviously if it's snowing or raining real hard, you wouldn't necessarily do that. But if, if, if that's not the case, you could open that up and allow some of that moisture to, to get out. Yeah. Uh, what I should have done was just run a stove in there. <laughs> that would have kept me right. a heck of a lot warmer. But I didn't have yeah, much time. And I, I, honestly, we didn't know it was going to get that cold that night. So we kind of were surprised by everything. But that's sure. that's the mountain, I guess, you know. Sure. Yeah, and, and that's definitely one of the advantages of running a stove in, mm -hmm. the, in those cold temperatures, right? Um, and I would say another thing is that it's not um, unique to our shelters to get condensation on the inside. Any single wall tent that's pitched tight to the ground, you know, uh, you yeah, take a, yeah. a Ziploc bag and turn it. I mean, it, they just they just create moisture in there. And most of that moisture is coming out of the ground itself. So, yeah, um, gotcha. Usually, usually picking a good spot, right, to pitch your tent. Um, you know, sometimes you can't you can't do it every time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but if you if you did happen to pitch in a in a spot where the grass is a little bit longer and it's going to hold a lot more of that dew overnight and that moisture in the ground, mm -hmm. um, you're going to get that. You're going to pull that out just with your body heat alone inside inside your tent. So. Yeah, I think the key takeaway here is kill whatever animal it is in early archery season and be done with it. And then you don't have to hunt in the cold weather. <laughs> That's the takeaway yeah, for that. If only, it was, if only it was that easy. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's look at the um, Silex. Yeah. Um, no, wait. So, yeah. We'll look at the Silex and then we'll come back to the stove. Sorry. Okay. Let's cover shelters first and then we'll go back yeah. to the stove. Um, so the Silex here, and I'm going to set it up, set this down over here, I think. So this is pretty cool. This is new for 2020, right? You guys just released um, these in the last six, seven yeah, months, came something out, like that. Uh, came out in July of last year, so just before oh, okay. archery. Um, okay. And so this is a, a trekking pole style tent. So made, you know, designed to be used with trekking poles. Um, what I have here is our carbon poles that we sell along with it. Um, so you, if you didn't want to use your trekking poles, right? Some guys don't use them. Some guys want their trekking poles every day and they want to leave their camp set up wherever it is. We do sell these carbon poles uh, separately. Um, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna blank on how much they weigh. They're super light, like super light. Um, and then the other thing you could do is you can buy just one of them. So if you wanted to use one trekking pole, one of our poles, uh, one of these, you know, trekking pole replacements and then use your trekking pole during the day you can do that um, or you can get two of them i have it set up with two right now because just because i had them uh, but yeah and so silex trekking pole style tent uh, but what makes this tent very unique is it our ability to have a full coverage tent so this goes straight all the way to the ground um or can get pitched to the ground or, kid, or can be pitched off the ground um, without a zipper. So there's no zipper here. This, uh, this is a line lock system that just runs on a piece of cordage. So field repla replaceable cordage, right? I don't mm -hmm. know how this would ever break unless you just cut it with a knife. But uh, Accidents if this happen. Were to break, <laughs> yeah, if, if this were to break, you can, you can replace that in the field. Um, but then it just goes up so you can open and close it with that line lock system um, and is that just like a paracord or is it uh, like a guy line yeah so um uh again I'm gonna, I'm gonna blank on the size off the top of my head um it's a it's a like a sterling like a, a woven kind of okay uh, um cordelette okay yeah um, so it's round yeah, that's a pretty slick setup right there. So I've got the Eolus, which is the – it's a bigger version of that. It's very similar. Yep. Um, yep. And I, that closure system is really cool. I, I thought that was really, really neat. Yeah, um, 
it, it there's a couple of things, right? No zippers to fail mm-hmm. because zippers just always tend to fail. Um, they're, they're usually the weakest point. Um, so no zippers to fail. And then no zippers also means that it's lighter. Um, right. So this one, this one I know comes in uh, right at like 17 ounces um, in, in the sill, in the sill nylon version. No zippers to leak also. Yeah, no zippers to leak. Exactly. This this seam down here, um, this is just seam seal, right? I got that seam seal. Uh, so yeah, you got no uh, no zippers to leak. Uh, yeah, just it's just easier to work with, um, and then fits with two treading poles. Mm-hmm. This and then, uh, a lot of people wonder too, like how how you fit in here. Um, this is uh, this is a regular sleeping pad, um, 72 inches long. Again, I'm I'm six foot one, six foot depending on the day, I suppose. Um, and I fit in here with I don't know. I got at least a foot down there and two feet off the top of my head, um, so. So it fits really well. The other thing that is is hard to appreciate without getting in one of these um, is how much room you have when I close these doors. So when I close this door, I have an entire area out here for my pack, right? I have this huge vestibule space, and then I get another one of those on the other side. So I close both these doors. I have two really big vestibule spaces. when I was running this last year, uh, archery season, yeah, again, I had backpack on one side and then my bow on the other side. So mm-hmm. everything was protected from the elements and it was right next to me. Um, we do make nests that go inside of here as well. Um, so you can get a screen room that pitches just on the inside, um, which, which it turns it into kind of that double wall uh, tent that most mm-hmm. people are used to. Um, I've run it both ways. Right, it, it works both ways for sure. Um, the other thing that's really cool to me is that at 17 ounces in pitching all the way to the ground and only pitches with you know two trim poles. Again, you could cut two sticks as well um, in four stakes. Uh, I can bring it as an emergency shelter. You know, like it's day hikes or just day hunts, maybe where I'm going out and. Uh, I don't expect to stay the night, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'd stay the night if, if something happened. Um, I have a, a full coverage system that's just easier to pitch than a tarp. You know, a lot of tarps, um, you got to have some skills to pitch a tarp really well. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At yeah. least you got to try it sometime. You know, and, and kind of figure that out. So, um, yeah, the, the Silex, as far as like a solo. Or that early season archery or just like all of archery season um, or in Colorado here, first, second season rifle. Uh, I'm, I'm taking the Silex as like my solo shelter or when I'm hunting with a group of guys that don't like sharing space, you know? Sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm one of those uh, guys. I, I kind of like to do my own you, thing. Yeah, you like yeah. your space. Yeah. And, um, so it also comes with a stove jack, right? Totally. So um, you can get. This one, this one doesn't have it uh, set up right now, but um, we will we will put a stove jack in one of the doors. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you see that, all right? Um, yeah, I can see it. So we can put a stove jack in one of the doors, and essentially, then you leave this door closed. Um, but it'll run a stove just right inside that door here, out the top. Uh, and you know, our our cub or our medium would be a perfect size uh, for this this the shelter and then yeah man i bet that gets warm in there yeah yeah exactly and this peak height being so short right like i'm it's not 610 it's not six foot like all that heat goes up anyways and and then it's just right there it's it's like it's a very warm setup for how small it is yeah 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 that's a really neat little really neat little setup right there for sure the other thing i want to kind of touch on if you guys can see this, I'm gonna move this down a little bit. Can you see that stakeout loop? All right. Yep. Um, so th- this is our line lock system um, for these adjustable stakeout loops. So I have it pitched with a bunch of slack right here. And thus the, the edge of the tent, let me close the door.
I have a lot of space, right? I have a lot mm-hmm. of ventilation that I'm able to achieve by pitching it up off the ground. Um, if I just slid these in and tighten this up, I could pitch this really tight to the ground as well. You know, so mm-hmm. one of the advantages, if we're talking kind of Silex versus Eolus, our two kind of zipperless shelters, um, the Eolus, you can't really get as close to the ground. It's not, not made to pitch real, real tight to the ground. The Silex, just the geometry of it allows it to be pitched tight to the ground. And then we also have another guy out point on each door, kind of. Um, a third of the way down the door or so. Uh-huh. This really helps. Uh, I, I, I find myself not using these very often, uh, but when I do, it's because I have my shelter set up and the wind maybe is coming from this side, and I can tighten down this door and really tighten everything up and then just use the other door to get in and, uh, in and out of, and it really sure. makes it more weather, weather worthy on that side. So. Okay. Cool. Is there guy out points along the sides anywhere on that too? Uh, nope. Just this is the only one. Just yep. Okay. Just a, uh, like okay. Yeah. There is a there is a little guy out where your head would be. Okay. Um, so you can pull these out to create a little bit more headroom. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Very good. The other thing too, I guess while we're talking about little little features, we put D rings at the top of the Silex and the Eolus. So you can mm-hmm. actually pitch this without a pole. If you if you could string it in between two trees, mm-hmm. you can pitch it without poles. Cool. Uh, which, which, is a, which is a cool setup for anyone where there's a lot of trees, right? East Coast or something. Um, mm-hmm. Or you just happen to hunt in a spot with a lot of trees. But but yeah, that, that's cool. A lot of guys will use this as an extra, extra guy out point as well to pull off the top, I see. Um, I just put up a picture the other day of a, a guy in Alaska on a ridge line had it all tied down that way. Hmm. So. Cool. A lot of features in that little thing. Yeah, the, the Silex is the Silex and Eolus are cool little shelters, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. All right, so back to stoves. You guys offer a few. You have a newer version, one that's called a U-turn. Is that right? Yeah, totally. And that's uh, that's what I have here. Um, and can you, can you see that already? Is that looking? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, our U-turn being that we have this full piece that wraps all the way around. So instead of our boxed sides that we had before, we have this kind of U shape. Um, you lose a little bit of square footage on the edges, uh, but you're able to save significant weight. You know, I think in the medium, it's like somewhere around six ounces or seven ounces or so. Um, and the other thing that we did to save that weight is we went to a smaller damper size. So this is two and a half inches in a two and a half inch pipe versus our standard size, uh, which is three and an eighth. Um, so it's a, this is a little bit smaller pipe as well in our U-turn stove here in the medium, the medium and the large. Does, does that affect burn time, having that smaller dampener? Um, not not like significantly enough that we like that we noticed in our testing right it didn't it didn't increase it or decrease it by an hour or 40 minutes or something um no in these smaller stoves in the fact that the stove pipe you know this stove pipe is six foot tall in the cimarron um they're not super long right they're, they're pretty short in the grand scheme of things they're pretty short pipes and um, so that change in size didn't seem doesn't seem to affect it that much, right? Where it's like super noticeable in burn times or mm-hmm. anything. Um, yeah, and um, we still make this in both styles: the box stove and, and the U-turn, uh, the U-turn size. Okay. Um, both are titanium. Yep, both are titanium. Um, so everything's titanium except for the threaded rod. The threaded rod is, st- is stainless, but. Um, the, the threaded rod, uh, you can get anywhere as well, right? Like, you easily replace that yourself. Um, but, yeah, the, the rest of the, everything else is, is tie um, and last, again, okay. for, you know. Yeah. Um, and what you said that's a, what size is that? A medium? Yeah, this is a medium here. Okay. 
and I've seen people cook on the top of those before. Is that? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So um, this thing is going to get like red hot when you're, when you're cooking it or like when you're, uh, if, if I was to get this roaring, right, it's going to get, it's mm-hmm. going to get really hot um, to where you can see that. And yeah, I mean, easily with a titanium cup, you could melt snow on top of this um, in those later years. You can also cook on it. Um, you know, lots of guys with fry pans are bringing fry pans. I've even seen elk steaks that they just like, they just set on the tie Plopped. and just cook it right on top. Plopped right yeah. on there. Yeah, like yeah. it's a grill. Um, we'll clean yeah, that you, up later. <laughs> uh, Becca, at uh, uh, my coworker Becca, she's been doing these cooking videos. Uh, we're going to have another one coming out sometime soon where she makes chili and cornbread. Uh, so she's using underneath the stove to bake stuff with um, and then like cooking on the top. So, wow, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you can you can do all kinds of stuff with the with the stove and, and cooking on it. Um, hmm. You know, I'm uh, thinking biscuits and gravy right now. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So let's talk uh, about so, the size of the stoves for size of shelter. Yeah, absolutely. So um, th- this is the Cimarron, right? So in a, in a medium. Cimarron medium makes a lot of sense to me um, if you're saving weight. Uh, typically, what happens out of out of anybody that gets our stuff and, and uses our stuff for any amount of time um, is they go they go with the smallest thing because they want to save the weight, you know, or or maybe a little bit of money or or what what have you. Um, and then next year they come and buy the next size bigger. <laughs> Yeah. Always. Okay. Right. If they, if they they get this out, they have a third season hunt. Um, it snows on them. They realize like how amazing this is. They always want the next size bigger. Um, so I would say if they're if we're given recommendations on our website or, or whatnot, or, or you can call them and talk to us as well, we're usually going to tell you to go up. Right. So in the in the Cimarron, I would say a large is a, is a great option, you know, um, that being said, you can then move it, you know, um, kind of depends on what you want to do, right? If that's, you know, a lot of guys will run two shelters, two of our shelters or something. Um, they might, they might want a red cliff and a Cimarron, you know, um, then the larger stove or would be, would be advantageous because you can use it in both. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, in, and without trying to complicate things, let's say you, for ex- it, um, example, you already have a Cimarron and then you're looking at like a, a Silex or, or um, you want to go kind of like the two smaller shelters, then I might recommend a medium, right? Because a medium was going to work fine in the Silex and it's also going to work in the Cimarron. Um, mm-hmm. If you're trying to double up, that's where the size is. Um, but if you're only, you know, hey, I'm just going to buy the Cimarron. I would say a large. Um, if we're looking at the Red Cliff, um, I would say an SXL in the Red Cliff is a really good idea. A little bit bigger, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we we make an SXL and an XL. Um, the SXL just means short, like short extra large. So it's as wide as an extra large. It's just a little bit shorter, um, and because it's not that big. We're able to keep the rod diameter smaller and save a bunch of weight. When you go to an extra large, it gets significantly heavier because of that rod. That rod changes to support all the weight that you could possibly load in that box. Um, so the X- SXL in the Red Cliff um, would be kind of my recommendation. Um, and then from there, again, I would, uh, you know, anything bigger than that, you, you know, I'd be the big mom is really nice when you get an eight man, you know, it's like having that giant firebox uh, is, is really nice to have. So, yeah. Cool. Okay, good. Yeah. That answered a lot of questions. I know Jordan, Jordan and I both talk about stoves all the time and what size we need to get. And we both run Cimarron's. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I've I would say, been, yeah. For, been, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, just for you guys, um, yeah, the, the large, I would say, would be a, a really good option, you know. Um, and then then people ask the next question, well, should I get a U-turn, right? Do I get a, do I get a large or a large U-turn? Mm-hmm. And, and for me, it's, it comes down to, like, 
are you going to be packing it? And does is the weight like? Are you doing this for weight reasons, right? Um, or are you not going in that far? Or are you able to, you know, um, not carry all that stuff? And, and then I would go with just a regular box stove, you know. Um, when you're looking at the same size stuff, that everybody wants to go lighter, you know. So mm-hmm. <laughs> if you if you are carrying it um, that far, you know, then the U-turn you know, it gets into a weight thing at that point more than anything else. Yeah, of course. It's always a weight thing. Well, um, awesome. Well, I think we're we're pushing our – I wanted to be done under an hour. We're kind of pushing that. So I'm just going to finish off. I'm going to ask you one question. What do you think your best all around, like if you were recommending a shelter to backcountry rookies, right, somebody that's new to the backcountry, what would be your recommendation to go with? Yeah, this, this Cimarron um, this Cimarron's really hard – to be as far as usability and versatility um you know you can stick four people in there in the summertime two people um it'll take a hot you know it'll take a stove it becomes a hot tent if you want it to uh, it's still light enough to carry as a backpacking tent it's spacious um you know and it's relatively cheap for that size as well you know um or not it doesn't break the bank anyways you know um, mm-hmm. i really like the cimarron um, just you can it's a four season tent that you can run comfortably in in the summertime uh, that most four season tents you can't you know? yeah yeah i totally agree with you i i really like my cimarron that's something that i've that's a purchase i'm i've been happy with ever since i made it you know i never looked back so yeah anyway all right well what how what's all the contact info how do people find more about seek and and all that stuff yeah, totally. So you can check us out at uh, seekoutside.com. Um, you can find us on Instagram, Seek Outside, uh, Facebook, Seek Outside. We have a very active Seek Outside Adventures group on Facebook. Um, so if you're if you're new to this stuff and new to the hot tents and you just have some questions and you want to talk to, you know, not me, the guy who's, you know, I work for Seek Outside. You want to talk to our users, people who have been using our stuff in and using our stuff for a long time, uh, that Seek Outside Adventures Facebook group is is there's a lot of good information in there, um, and there's a lot of people in there as well. Uh, so th- that's a good spot to go. Um, you can also find us, you know, on Twitter, Seek Outside on Twitter, if, if that's your thing. So cool. And, and you can even track us down on TikTok sometimes. Seek Outside. So. <laughs> I haven't used Twitter, and I can't tell you how long, and I won't look at TikTok. <laughs> but all the other ones, uh, and that's good information about that. That um, seek. What was it again? Seek the Facebook group. It's yeah. If you go to our Facebook page, seek seek outside Facebook page. Our Facebook group. Um, it's uh, seek outside adventures. Okay. Yeah. I'm checking it out now. I didn't know that was out there, and I I certainly want to be in that. There it is. Cool. That's a good, Very uh, good. There's a lot of good information in there. A lot of good discussions about sizes, right? People with the same questions: What size stove should I get? And then um, a lot, of, a lot of like actual users piping in about what they've done and how they've done it uh, for for a while. So, yeah, good. That's always good to have. Is I like that wide range of people who ask good questions and then people who give good, honest, valuable answers. So. Good deal. Well, Dennis, I certainly appreciate your time today. I know you took an awful lot of time to set all this stuff up, and I, I appreciate it. And I, I think it went really well. I, I think I hope it was worth it. I think it, it cool, was man. for yeah. me at least. Yeah, it was great, great talking to you, Chad. And uh, yeah, I look look forward to it. Hopefully, we get to do it again sometime. Uh, hopefully, we get get to see you when you come into Colorado this year and show you all the stuff. So yeah, it'd be cool. Very good, very good. All right, man. I'm gonna get off of here. All right. Yep, out of here.